Hi everyone, Jason here with another Makera Cam example project. In this one, we're looking at how to machine a fourth axis relief through one of our spring and Easter themed projects from spring of 2025. So first you can grab any of the sample models from any of our example projects from our wiki site down on the knowledge sharing page. And specific to this project, we'll be machining the rotation relief example project where we're machining this egg on a fourth axis. So you can download this STL file from the knowledge sharing page for our spring 2025 examples, or you can just download the completed uh, rotation relief MKC file for the full Makera cam file that we'll be creating in this tutorial. Once you download your files, head over to Makera cam and create a new fourth axis project. And the first thing we want to do is set up our fourth axis project and our stock parameters to match our stock that we'll be working with. So I'm going to be using a piece of hardwood material, specifically a piece of plywood that uh, I like to use hardwood for. That's going to be a square piece of stock. And the length of my material is going to be 80 millimeters with a width of 50 and a height of 40 like so. So I can set that accordingly. I'm going to import my 3D model of the STL file that we can download here. And you might find that you need to reorient the parts that you import, but we can do that using the transform tool pretty easily. So using the transform tools, I'm just going to rotate this part around so it better fits within my stock like so. And if you need to, you can also use the transform tools to scale this part as well. Now, before we begin to make our toolpaths, we need to actually create our tabs for a fourth axis project. And you could import a model that has tabs already created, but MakeCaraCam makes creating these tabs pretty easy to do using the Create tool. So if we launch the Create tool menu here under the Transform, we can create a 3D model. And I'm gonna create two tabs, one for the base and one for the top of my part. Starting with a cylinder that's 20 millimeters in diameter and 10 millimeters in height. And I can create this cylinder here. Okay. And then using my transform tools, I should be able to move this pretty easily. I'm going to first select my cylinder and then quick align it to the stock, which will center it automatically. And then I can just slide it along one axis to allow it to extrude out of the base of my egg shape like this without, of course, exiting my stock. So let me pull that in a little bit more. Something like that should work quite well. Okay, so there is my base tab. And let's create one more shape for our top tab. But because the egg is sort of curved down here, I'm going to actually create a cone instead of a cylinder to kind of capture that curve a little bit better. So, so for the cone, I'm going to make it with a top diameter of 15, a bottom diameter of 5, and a height of 8. And I can draw this cone and then again use my transform tools to align it and then slide it so it just grabs onto the top of my part. Right, something, something like that holds on nicely there. All right, so with our tabs created, uh, let's go ahead and create our first toolpath, which will be a roughing path to start to machine this part. So I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard and select my egg STL file, and also my tabs, then create a rotation relief toolpath. Now our max depth can be zero millimeters, and our safe position should be one half your stock diameter plus about three millimeters or so. So a clearance height of about 35 millimeters works well for my stock diameter that I'm working with for both clearance and retract height. Then for our tool, I'm going to select a longer tool that can reach the depth of this. So I'm going to select a um, single flute non-metal bit that's well, 3.175 by 25 millimeters for my flat end mill here, one of our sample tools. And you'll see that my, my cutting parameters are automatically set to hardwood. After selecting the tool, you can choose to adjust the default cutting parameters as you see fit, but there are a few things that you should consider for this type of roughing pass. We want to enable step downs, but we can actually up the step downs to be about two millimeters for this stock if you're working with a wood like I am that you can work with here. And you also might want to change your tool number depending on which order you're using this tool or in relation to the slot that it's loaded in for the Carvera's automatic tool changer if you are using the Carvera. We also want to enable a depth allowance, which would stop this large tool from getting too close to the finishing surface uh, of our part. So I'm going to enable a 0.5 millimeter depth allowance. 
Now for a roughing pass, a horizontal direction usually works really well to clear material out as it pans side to side. And we do want to enable tail stock because we'll be using the tail stock to secure this part. So with all these set, we can hit calculate. And that should go ahead and generate our roughing rotation relief toolpath like so. Okay, next we can create another toolpath, which will be for a finishing pass, but this time I'm gonna select just the egg. So with just the egg selected, we can go ahead and create a rotation release toolpath again. And the reason I didn't select the tabs is because I don't need to do a finishing pass on the tabs. I just wanna do a finishing pass on the egg shape as we go here. So I don't have to change my cutting depth or my safe positions, but I do wanna change my tool. And this time around, I'm going to select an engraving bit specifically the 0.2 millimeter by 30 degree engraving bit that comes in our example pack. And you'll again see that hardwood is selected for our default materials. As it's a finishing pass, I don't actually need to leave a step down because I've already machined pretty close to the surface here. So I can actually disable step downs for this finishing pass. We can choose to reassign the tool number as needed. And we also don't need a depth allowance because I want this engraving bit to come right up to the surface of my part. You might want to consider changing your direction to vertical, which typically works better for a more intricate and detailed uh, finishing pass here. And we also don't need to enable tail stock because we're not going to be machining up to that uh, because the tab's already been machined at this point. So let's go ahead and calculate this finishing pass. Okay. And just to show you what we have here, let me hide uh, my model and I'll also hide the roughing pass. So here is the finishing pass, and you'll notice that even though I didn't select the tabs, it did finish up to the tab shape, so we can see the tab shape profiles here. And here is the roughing pass, which you can see doesn't get too close to the egg. So we have our finishing pass and our roughing pass. And now with that, we can go ahead and export these toolpaths by right-clicking and clicking Save All Toolpaths. You'll see in a more recent edition of Make Care Cam, you can choose to adjust the tool number upon export, as well as choose to export your toolpaths rather than being together for a single G-code file, but a separate G-code file, which sometimes is a good idea for fourth axis because we usually want to clear up the area before we move on to the second pass. So once you make that adjustment, go ahead and export these as a G-code file, where we can then move over to setting up our machine. But before we begin to manufacture the design, we need to prepare our machines with the fourth axis module. And while I'm using the Carvera Air for this example, both the Carvera Air and Carvera can be equipped with the optional fourth axis module. And you can see how to do this in our examples, guides, and tutorials on our wiki site and YouTube channel. After loading our stock and setting up our machine, we can upload our exported G-code files in the Carvera controller app where you can navigate on your computer to upload your G-code file to the controller app, and then select the file once it's been uploaded. With our file loaded, we can then head over to the config and run window to configure this part for this project. Now you'll notice that the work origin offset changes to a fourth axis configuration whenever a fourth axis file has been loaded, and you can choose to offset your projects accordingly based on your parameters. We don't need to change our Y offset, but we can adjust our X offset depending on your stock size. I'll be setting an offset of 40 for X, which will center my part on my fourth axis. We also enable scan margin, which will trace the perimeter of our part before machining to allow us to confirm it's in the right spot, and auto Z probe, which will probe the fourth axis in a fixed location for calibration purposes. Once set, we can press run to begin to manufacture this project. After completing the scan margin and probing sequence with the wired probe, the Carvera Air will prompt us to load tool one, while the Carvera will select this tool automatically. After loading tool one, which will be the 3.175 by 25 millimeter single flute end mill in the Carvera Air using the quick tool changer, we can then press the button on the top of the machine to continue manufacturing. First, the roughing pass will be machined to begin to carve out the rotation relief into our wood stock using the larger bit by moving both the X, Y, Z, and A axis using the fourth axis module. When machining using the fourth axis, we never want to use the dust shoe, but we can instead use the air assist system for chip evacuation and cooling, though this typically wouldn't be needed with softer materials like wood. Once the roughing pass is complete, it's good practice to first vacuum away some of the dust and chips made before continuing on to the next tool path. For this, we are prompted to load our next tool, the 0.2 millimeter engraving bit, before continuing to machine the finishing pass of the relief. 
Once this part has finished, we can remove it from the machine before cutting off the tabs using a handsaw and some sandpaper. We also personally drilled a small hole in the bottom of the egg to connect it to our other Easter example projects and glued the 3D brass relief coin on we made to the flat face of the egg as shown. And that's all there is to it. This type of project takes advantage of the Carvera and Carvera Air's ability to machine geometrically complex projects using the optional fourth axis module. Check out our other two tutorials for our Easter project examples on the Makera channel, and of course, please don't forget to subscribe.